In this video, we're going to keyframe animate our fade in, fade out for our text. So to do that, we need to create an animation. So down here in the bottom left, you can keep track of all your animations and you know maybe you could have several, but uh, for me, we only need one. So if you click this green button, we're going to add a new an animation and um, title this, let's just call this intro quote fade in. I think makes sense. All right. So once we have our animation, we need to specify which objects in our UI we want to animate. So to do that, once we have our animation selected, you'll see all this pop up over here. We want to select a UI object to add to our animation. And that's going to be our intro text right here because we want this to fade in. So once you have your intro text, selected, which is why it's important to name this properly so you can figure out where your stuff is. So select your intro text, come down here to this green track button, click that, and click in, uh, click intro text. So this is specifying the object which we have selected. So if you don't see it here, it's because you don't have it selected. I select that, green button for track, and then intro text. So once you add that, it's adding this um, UI element to the UI animation. Now, once this is here, we want to specify what attribute on your uh, text, or sorry, your UI element, well, actually in this case, on your text element that you want to animate. Because you know maybe you want to animate your color, which is what we want to do, our opacity. Uh, maybe you want to animate the size, like whatever you want to animate, you need to specify that right here. So to do that, click your, int your intro text, click track. And these are the things that you can animate on your text object. So you could do uh, pivot, you know, transform, shadow, blah, blah, blah. I'm just gonna pick, where is this? Color and opacity. All right, so once I've added the attribute to animate, you can expand this right here. You can see we can animate our red value, our green value, blue, and our alpha, which is what we want. So if I were to turn this down, what we want to happen is you want it to go from zero. Uh, well, right now, notice you can go below zero, but that doesn't really make sense. Um, we're gonna go from zero, fade it up to one over time, hold it, then hit another keyframe to hold, to hold it this at the value of one, and then move a little bit further and then fade it down. So to do that, um, when it comes to keyframe animation, it's easy to think about, at, think about it in this sequence. Say in your head, at this point in time, then move your time marker, at this point in time, I want this value to be this. So then you can change the value. At this point in time, I want the value to be this and you can change it. So we're gonna do that method. And so first go to zero and say at zero seconds, I want this, I want the alpha to be zero. So I'm gonna hit my keyframe right there. And that's gonna add our keyframe, but notice we already had one. And then consider how, how long of a fade in do you want? And, um, right here, you saw me doing a zoom in, zoom out. Let's just hold control and do middle mouse wheel right there. So hold control, middle mouse wheel, that will zoom in, zoom out. Go to one second. You can also manually put in right here. Over here, you can just put, um, actually two seconds, I think would, is what I want. So at two, that'll jump to two seconds. At two seconds, so make sure your marker's there, I want the alpha to be one. And you'll notice that it automatically added a keyframe. That's, that's because we're doing automatic keyframe. Um, if, if you change the value at a different marker that doesn't have a keyframe, like if I were to change the value, it would automatically add a keyframe. I'm just gonna leave that on <clears throat> and keep going. So um, now if you go back to the beginning and you press spacebar, you can see it fade in like that. I think that's pretty good. You know, if you, you can make it slower if you want. I think this is fine. Um, if you wanna make this animation longer, hold control and middle mouse to zoom out. Uh, you can also hold control and do right mouse button to move this along. I'm gonna go to four seconds and what I need to do is I need to put a holding keyframe. And what this is saying is um, at one second, I want to hold the value of one 
for this amount of time. So how long do I want this text to be there before it starts fading away? So from two seconds to, uh, you know, let's, let's say five seconds. I think that's pretty good. Go to five seconds. Uh, at five seconds, I actually want to retain this keyframe, uh, this alpha value of one. So I'm just gonna hit the keyframe button right there. And then at six seconds, and you'll see, um, for me, this is locking my cursor, so I actually can't move outside of that. If, you, if that happens to you as well, what you can do um, over here, next to the playback options, there's a couple of values that you can turn on and off. Um, keep playback range and selection bounds. This is saying, um, sorry, this is saying, do you want to be able to expand this uh, or not? What I, if I just wanna get rid of this cursor lock to, uh, from beginning to end, I actually like that sometimes, but in this case, I want to make it beyond, or you know, I could just pull this out um, and then I can move the cursor further. Uh, I prefer this method, but if you wanna turn that off, you could just turn it off right there. Um, so if you wanna move the cursor beyond the bounds. So anyways, I just expanded the length of my animation. You'll see the, the red right here is defining the end of my animation and the green is the beginning. So I'm holding from two to five and from five to, let's keep our, let's keep our fade out the same amount as our fade in, which was, Two seconds. So from five, I already have my keyframe there. So at five second marker, I want my alpha to be one, but at seven, I want my alpha to be zero. So I'll change, I'll move my marker then I'll change my value. And I'll automatically have my keyframe, but if it didn't, you could just click the key, this little um, plus button to add a new keyframe. Okay, let's preview it. Kind of get a feel for the timing that feels too long or too, uh, not long enough. Um, you know, for me, I actually, I, I think that that's there long enough. If you had a longer quote, you might need more time or less time, but I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start fading out a little sooner. So it's gonna have a slower fade out um, and that will also reduce the amount of time that it's there. So I, I think this is gonna be a little bit closer to what I want. So to me, it feels a little bit more ominous just to have it slowly fade out. Um, and you'll see it's a little bit longer uh, fade out than fade in. So just do whatever looks comfortable to you. We would consider this in, um, in animation terms, this would be considered the animation principle of timing, which is just the distance between the keyframes. If you make the distance between keyframes shorter, right, right, this distance is shorter, that means your timing is going to be quicker. If you make it further away, right, this keyframe in here, means um, your animation is going to appear slower. So this is just considered timing. You can move the keyframes around if you want, but I would recommend only adjusting the, um, the, end, the end keyframe, the fade in, like this first keyframe, the hold, and then the hold, and then get something that is good for you. Um, all right, that, that'll do it for our initial keyframe animation. So just get this looking to how you want it, and you should be able to preview that with spacebar. And that's looking good, all right.